What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, here we got a 2001 CR125. Um, I just picked up. Um, the whole engine's been redone. However, they do have a Chinese top end in it that we're going to get out and we're going to pull the cylinder anyway because we do want to port this thing. Um, but today's video is just going to be bringing you guys along with uh, doing some tuning on this thing. Um, it's pretty close. Um, I just feel like the, uh, the mid-range, uh, which would be the needle height adjustment, which I'm, that's what we're going to show you here today, is just a little bit off. We're going to go down one. I think stock is um, a needle free position at a 380 main is what they tell you to run with an FMF pipe here. Um, but I still feel like it's just a little rich in the mid, so we're going to try dropping it down one and uh, see if it cleans it up a little bit. And uh, we're going to dive right into that, guys. And I can't stress this enough. When I first started, and I'm still no expert, guys, at, at uh, tuning bikes, but I've done a lot in the past year. And let me tell you something with, uh, you know, getting an idea for the main jet, the pilot jet, and um, as far as the, uh, the needle height adjustment goes, there was a lot of times where I would just go with what the service manual called for or your reference for your pipes and still not be quite there. And until I started really, uh, maybe like summer temps, you might even want to lean it out even more than what it calls for, but a lot of them have a temperature range, but that still might not be to where it's 100% dialed in. So don't be afraid to go ahead, leaner. And again, guys, if you're sketched out, learn how to plug chop. You can plug chop just off of running off a of mid or on the uh, main jet of wide open throttle. So definitely learn how to plug chop, guys, by a couple extra plugs. If if you're not not sure if it's dialed in um, somewhere where you're worried about a lean out condition you definitely got a plug chop guys but anyhow i thought i'd throw out a little bit of information there that i've learned and especially in the past couple months here uh, with tuning stuff i've been doing it a lot uh, on top of my build so uh, anyhow guys without further ado let's dive into it all right guys don't panic you're going to have a little bit of gas flow out of the carburetor um, that's to be expected it won't be but so much uh, and then we're going to loosen up these two clamps right here on the intake um, portion of the carburetor then the air filter side of the carburetor and you can spin the carb over guys this works well too um, if you want to swap out the main jet without pulling the carb uh, completely out so keep that in mind guys it's a little uh, sneaky getting in here to this field uh, it's actually a little better this time around um, and I'll tell you a little story what I did here guys is I kind of got in a hurry here this morning I kind of slid this uh, in front of another job because I'm just like that sometimes. <laughs> it's something that's always, you know, stays on my mind. It's like, I got to get this done. And I, I don't know, it's just saying. But anyhow, what I did is I think I took the, uh, I took the pin on the uh, needle uh, the wrong way. I enriched it instead of leaning it out. And I, you know, so it just, uh, it ran even more worse. And actually this guy, this bike's actually running pretty daggone good. I just feel like it's just a little bit uh, sputtery on the mid, uh, especially in the top end of first gear, which you don't use too much. Once you get in second, third, fourth, uh, it seem, and fifth, uh, it seems to be doing all right. It don't hit fifth much around here. But anyhow, guys, you're just gonna pull the slide out. Uh, this is a Mikuni style carburetor. I know different gears have the kind, so uh, jetting and everything will be a lot different. Uh, and, and maybe even the design. Um, I think the kinds are kind of similar, but they are, de are totally different cars, carburetors, excuse me. I wanted to get this live because this can be kind of tricky and intimidating for a lot of guys. Some are easier than others, but basically you're just going to pull the spring up. Um, they're all designed a little different on how this cable locks in there. Some have like a little device. Um, here's like the little plastic lock-in piece here, for lack of better terms. And all you want to do is pull your spring up as far as possible and hold it there with your fingers. It takes a little bit of finger strength, guys, and then boom, comes right out and then just uh, lightly release the tension on the spring and try not to let it shoot across the room like I've done many a times. And then guys, a lot of the other carburetors, uh, this actually has to screw out of there. So we're gonna get a socket on that and screw that out so we can remove the needle. All right guys, <clears throat> so what it looks to be an eight mil in there, I got a quarter on here, which um, I wouldn't recommend using, uh, but I'm gonna do it. And don't over tighten this, your main jets, any of that stuff guys. This is not, it doesn't have to be like crazy tight, but you also don't want them too loose to where your jets and the stuff's uh, coming apart when you're out riding, so that can be a problem too. But don't over torque this. It really doesn't have to be 
crazy, crazy tight. Just give it a little bump. All right, so we, so there's that there. Hopefully that's coming in there, and uh, that'll just come right out of there, and that that screws, you know, threads right into that slide piece there, and then we're going to drop this out. Um, see, so now here you can see it, guys. Um, it calls for needle three on this FMF pipe uh, with the 380 guys. And let me tell you something with these hot, humid, uh, dense air. And then we got the smoke in the air coming down from Canada. It's densing the air up. So, you know, um, you definitely just have to play with your jets. Like, you know, summertime jetting to wintertime jetting is, is completely different guys. And I'll post some charts right here to help you guys out just to look how you can see jetting fluctuates from temperature uh, and it goes into air density and all that guys so it's just something you have to just kind of use as a reference for uh, like a cheat sheet and that's what i've done um to help me out guys uh you know especially if you're not tuning bikes all the time but i'm doing it a good bit here lately so so guys if it was at the needle three position and what we did was drop the needle down so what this is going to do is actually raise the needle up and that's where i messed up and I knew as soon as I got on the bike and I felt it, I'm like, oh my gosh, we went the wrong way. I did that in a hurry. So guys, never be in a hurry like me sometimes um, and, and take your time. But we're going to jump up here. I think it would be the needle two position. Um, sometimes I get those backwards from, from uh, where it starts one to four. But what we're going to do is lean it out, which would be going up uh, from needle three. And then what that's going to do is moving this clip up is dropping this needle down, which is going to lean it out so if you were to move the clip down where i did the first time that's going to move the needle up and then it's going to enrich in everything on the mid and that's usually about 20 to 80 percent guys uh running off this needle right here so that just brings a valid point why the needle adjustment is so important guys because 20 to 80 percent think about it um those percentages might not be exactly what they're supposed to be that's just uh the way I understand, it, it could be different on this bike. All carburetors can be designed a little different, but that's like a general reference, guys. So um, don't be afraid to tweak around with this. And again, plug chop, guys. Run it on mid-range. Run it right in 50% down the road for a quarter mile and, and see where it's at by by uh, looking at your plug and reading your plug. There's plenty of videos out there, guys. All right, guys, I got tons of these. So if I lose one, it's not the end of the world. But I remember when I first started, it was like, oh my gosh, you would lose one and, and basically freak out. Um, but I'm doing this one-handed right now. You want a good pair of needle nose. And why I say that is some of them get wore out on the tip and they really don't get a good grip. If you bear down on that really hard, I, I rarely ever lose them. But you have to have a good pair of needle nose that, uh, that actually get a hold of it well. If it's slipping on it, Go find yourself another pair of needle nose because more than likely you're going to pull and fling that freak in, pull it clean across the room. And if you don't have extras, yeah, you're going to be ordering one up. Again, sorry guys for the fan. I got my slide out of the way. And like I was just saying, make sure you have a hold of that really, really well. And I kind of just like to cut my hands over it and pull on it. And as long as your needle nose is getting a hold of that clip really, really well, it shouldn't fly out of there, but I've had crappy needle nose pliers um, cause the issue of that clip flying across the room. So just to keep that in mind, guys. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna bump it up the one above the needle three position, leaning it out. I think that might be needle three. If I find a chart, I'll post it in the video of the, the numbers there. Uh, but basically just go off a of stock and it's real easy to say, oh yeah, I'm leaning there. If the needle's going up in the carb, you're enriching in it, uh, enriching uh, the mid range. Uh, don't do like I'm doing guys and crossing over from one side to the other there. Um, I'm kind of uh, trying to talk and not looking at this real hard. So if you do this guys, I've done this before, you kind of twist the clip. All you gotta do is get in here and give it a little tweak back. And then I kind of hit it sideways a little bit here and it uh, puts it right back into place there. We're going to get a little more careful here with uh, putting this in. So one and two down from the top. We've been around 90 degrees, guys, 90, 91 degrees. Uh, we got that smoke in the air from uh, coming down from the wildfires in Canada. 
So that definitely will play a toll in the jetting for sure. So you might have to go outside your norm and we'll go out here and take a ride after we get this back in and see if it helped out. All right, there's a closer look guys. So needle three would have been number three down. Obviously that would be either way, number three. So you can't really mess that up. That's FM, I think that's even the Honda factory setting. And I think even the FMF uh, recommendation, don't hold me to that. I will post a picture of this in the video guys. But we, we bumped it up one, which will bring the needle down further, which will lean it out. All right guys, easy peasy part here. All we're gonna do is drop this down in there. Make sure that's clipped in there well, guys. Double check, it's all seated in there the whole way around properly. And you don't bend it up like I did the first time around. Slides right in there. And then you take this little cap here. And then all we're gonna do is tighten that down. And not over tighten it, guys. Let's go into it, stops per se, and just give it a little bump. Like right there we hit. This is aluminum, guys. This will, you'll pull threads in a second. Just a little bump, just like that. And that's it, guys. We're gonna go ahead and get this back on the bike. Uh oh, we got a special guest. Say hi. Hi. You ready to turn some wrenches, boy? All right, bro. <laughs> all right, guys. So I thought I'd do this live with getting this all on here, because um, sometimes it is a struggle, and I've been there, done that in the past. Some go right in, sometimes you do one um, and it goes right together and then you do it a second time and then you're fighting it. It's just the way that life works sometimes. But if you look into here, I don't know if you can see that very well, there's a, there's a little notch. There's a little notch in there. And if you look at this piece right here, there's a little notch in it. So you may have to spin it once you get your cable up in there. You may have to spin it to make sure that drops and seats into place, guys. All right, so another thing you got to keep in mind is the cable's got to be seated into this uh, top adjuster here, that brass adjustment. Um, if, it's, if it's not seated in there, you'll be wondering why you're not getting enough cable down through the spring. And you will never get this in there if it's like that. Uh, ask me how I know, guys. I'm going to try my best to do this on camera with the camera right in my way, per se. And you're going to see me struggle doing so. But let's see what we can do here, guys. Let's set this down first. This is the trickiest part, is just kind of getting this cable um, through here. See, that's what I mean. That'll pop out, and if that's not seated into there properly, you will not get that cable in there. All right, we're going to try this live again, guys. I got my little buddy on the camera here. Help me out. There, I think I might have had something. So you want to hold the spring back as far as you can. And it's usually the tricky part, and you usually got to kind of do this blind because you can't see in there properly. Okay, so that's seated down in there. And I can see that our little gromlet uh, uh, piece does not fit, is not dropped in there properly. So what I'm going to do is just spin it. And uh, right there we got it. So you just kind of spin this around, and it'll drop in there. And a little tip, once it drops in there, you'll be like, where in the hell did the thing go? It just kind of disappears because it seats down in there. Um, if it's not if it's not in there properly, you will see it looking in there. So I thought I'd throw that in there. All right, guys, I'm gonna time lapse this. Just putting this all back together here. Um, plain and simple, guys. All right, guys, sorry, my angle's probably a little bit off there. My damn tripod won't cooperate. So all that's buttoned back up, slides right into place. There's a little square notch on the slide. You can't really put it in backwards like you can some other slides, guys. And I do have some other videos out showing that uh, the, the slide um, always has an arc towards the intake side. So if you have that backwards, the bike will not run. Or it may run, but run like absolute crap. All right, so now that we rotated the carburetor back into place, you just want to make sure your air box is still seated on there properly. Uh, we don't want to be su sucking no dirt. Uh, you know, micro stone, sand, etc., into the engine, that's for sure, guys. So this is all very, very important to crank these down in my book, guys. So I always, I'm the guy that probably does over tighten these sometimes, and that's why these uh, often like to get a little stripped out. That's why I like to use the straight on these. Got that one pretty tight. Another trick of the trade, too, guys, if you're uh, new, you just pressure tested this engine, 
two stroke. Um, don't be afraid to get your carb cleaner out guys and spray around all these gaskets and stuff uh, like right there where your carb mounts up where I'm tightening up right now. And if you have signs of air leaks, it, it's gonna stutter and, and show as soon as you spray it. So keep that in mind. All right, so we got that buttoned up. We're gonna put the fuel line on and I'll probably come back and hit these screws again because it's just how I am. I don't want air leaks. Uh, I want to run right. So what you gotta do guys. Okay, we got the fuel line buttoned up there and we're gonna just bump these one more time. That's pretty good. And that's pretty good, all right. Yeah guys, so we're getting ready to take this thing out here. Um, uh, Project YZ80, that, that bike's going out for sale, but I just wanted to throw this reference in here. Like, I put a first like a pipe on it, and I know the jetting was not right. Um, and I knew it was the mid. I, I, I just had to get around to doing it. And let me tell you, it was calling for, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the pipe sharp, it was calling for needle three position. I leaned it out one clip, because I, I could just tell it just wasn't turning on right. It wasn't real clean, a smooth transition through the power band. It just, just making that one adjustment made a world of difference how that bike ran. We plug chopped it, it's dialed in, and it's now out for sale. Um, and, and guys, the air screws on these carburetors always need uh, tinkered with, uh, especially with climate change, guys. So keep that in mind, learn how to adjust your air screw. Maybe I'll make a, a video on that later, but the air screws on these two strokes, you take them out, uh, it's gonna get leaner, it's gonna raise the idle. You wanna be able to get a good brum, and you want it to come right down. You don't want it to stay high aisle. That means it's still leaned out. It means you need more fuel. If you can't hit it and it goes up and then right back down, you're definitely got a lean out condition. Maybe I'll make a whole separate video on that too. But let's go out here and take a rip on this thing, guys. All right, guys. Wow. That woke this bike up. It's, it's so weird even to start it and just the way it changed it and idle. Um, didn't touch the low speed jet either. Didn't touch the air screw. And I could just tell, I was like right away on the rev. I could just tell it was dotted. We went and took it on the trail. Um, first gears, way better now. And all, all across the range. Uh, what we're also gonna do is get some more plugs in. I think I used up the last for this bike. I check see what I got. And we are gonna plug chop it on the mid. So I wanna make sure this is 100% safely dialed in. But I'm pretty sure we are dialed in now. And I can tell the way it's running. Um, sorry I didn't bring you guys along for taking me out on the track. I, didn't, I don't have my GoPro around. But guys, look for some footage of me getting out there and running this bike. Uh, we got a couple more things to do to it. I'd like to get a back tire on it before I do my first race. Um, I, uh, I got some shock uh, uh, swing arm linkage uh, bearings to replace. There's a little bit slop in the one, so we got to get that done. Every, everything else, uh, the seals don't appear to be leaking or anything. Um, we're eventually going to get a graphics kit on this and uh, juice it up a little bit guys before our first uh, race and get, get the cosmetics looking a little better too. Um, I'd like to even get a set of pro taper bars if that's at all possible but um, obviously I'm going to do what needs to be done first and uh, also get this Chinese piston Namor raw or whatever Chinese piston that's in here. I can see the end looking into the exhaust. It does have a brand new Wisco crank that we just put into it uh, which is good. Uh, we're going to get that jump piston out of there and work this thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching Digging Deep. Stay tuned, more videos to come on the CR uh, build and uh, hopefully getting out there and taking it to the track for the first time. Me and my little buddy and hopefully getting our first race in before the end of the summer here. Thanks for watching guys. Again, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, comment below, let us know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.